Good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the Central South Division Contest. I am so happy to see so many smiling faces out here. We have some great contestants that will be competing today. I've had the pleasure of seeing a lot of them compete before. I think everybody's in for a great treat. Um, I just really appreciate the support that all of you are out here to support these fellow Toastmasters who are very courageous, in my opinion, to come out and, and compete. So, without any further ado, we're going to try to move this contest along very quickly because it is a school night. So, <laughs> <laughs> to introduce a good, good friend of mine, very confident Toastmaster, your Toastmaster for the evening, Cynthia Leggett. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It is so good to be back in Central South. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Cynthia Leggett. I grew up in the Central, Central South Division and I did my area governorship here, so I feel like I've come back home. <laughs> so it's good to be back. But wait a minute. You didn't come here to hear about my past service, did you? Yes. Yes. You didn't come here to hear about how I started as a Toastmaster, did you? Yes. Uh, <laughs> big starting <in> club. <laughs> no, you are here for a Central South Division contest. Who is not ready for a contest? Good. <laughs> a few ground rules. First of all, if you have a Smart anything. <laughs> Whether it has a high school diploma, a bachelor's degree, master's doctorate, it's not quite smart enough to turn itself off yet. So I will ask that you please turn them off, but definitely silence them, but please turn them off if you can, so that our contestants will not be interrupted at all. Also, we are requesting, since we are having video taping done, and all of these tests have signed release forms that there is no photography during the contest or any video tape. You can take all the pictures you want when the contest is over or after the break. That'll give me time to touch up my makeup and all that other stuff. <laughs> Before we begin, we want to recognize some of our dignitaries in the audience, so I'm going to ask them all to stand. I'm going to ask everybody to at least hold their applause, but all of the dignitaries. Those who are serving in the district, please stand. We have our Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, Donna Watson. Our Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, Ethel Goatee. Our immediate past district governor, Ms. Joan Moore. Our Logistics Chair, Don Williams. Division Governor, Iqbal Atcha. Northwest Division Governor, your own Central South Melissa Newport. Central North Division Governor, Charles Chapman. South Division Governor, Lee Jones. Area Governors that are present, Christine Schultz, B11. Area Governor, Larry Joyner. Area Governor, Adrian Leaker. Area Governor, Rachel Clark. Area Governor, Amy Sanami. Rachel Muhammad, Area Governor, Stephanie Sissel. Area Governor, and Lillian Shepard, Area Governor, and I am paging through quickly. I don't see any more check marks. Did I miss anyone? Don't take it personal. Wonderful! <laughs> Evaluation contest. The first contest will be the speech evaluation contest. After we conclude that contest, we will have a break. We have 10 minutes, but we may change that based on the time. <coughs> After that break, we will conduct the humor speech contest. Contestants, timers, ballot counters, sergeant of arms have all been briefed. All the contestants are aware where our timers are at, right here in front. No one is to enter and leave the room during any contestant's presentation. You will be allowed to leave between the minutes. 
Are there any questions? Seeing none, on the count of three, I want you to shout out in your best vocal variety post festival voice. <laughs> Let the contest begin on the count of three. One, two, three. Let, Let the contest begin! Evaluation contestants. Contestant number one, Irene Robinson. Irene Robinson. Contestant number two, Matthew Fox. Matthew Fox. Contestant number three, Spencer Five. Spencer Five. Contestant number four, Ch Charlene Reinhardt. Charlene Reinhardt. Contestant number five, Juliana Kissack. Juliana Kissack. Now at this time, we're going to ask a wonderful individual to come up. She's going to be our target speaker. Let me introduce to you Samantha Wiseman, hiring practices, hiring practices, Miss Samantha. Needed to be successful in that job. 
So if I'm looking for my project manager, I probably want to look for somebody that can lead and influence people, that is great with attention to detail, strong communication skills. Those aren't listed on a resume. You have to, you have to ask. So stop focusing on years of experience and really focus on the quality and the skills that that candidate has. My last tip for you is always ask behavior-based questions. So once you have your competencies set, now you need to ask behavior-based questions because those competencies are on the resume. So you have to focus on asking questions that require the candidate to prove it. So I want attention to detail. Tell me about a time that you had great attention to detail. Or tell me about a project that you had to lead and influence others. Those are the questions that make candidates really prove it to you that they have the skills you're looking for. A typical interview question might be theoretical. I like using this example. Theoretical questions are questions that place a candidate in a hypothetical situation. Tell me about, or excuse me, not tell me about a time, but how would you deal with an irate customer? That's a theoretical question. I think everybody here could probably come up with a good answer to that question, but it doesn't really prove to me that you can do it. So a better way to ask that question is, tell me about a time you had to deal with an irate customer. Now the candidate has to start to really think and give you a time and give you data of when they've used those skills. So that's the best data to make a hiring or not hiring decision. The recruiting process can be long. It can be frustrating. You may have to review many, many resumes and speak to many candidates, and that's very time consuming. So don't get frustrated. Follow these tips and go with your gut, and at the end of the day, you will hire the best candidate for your team. Samantha, we'll be hearing from Samantha in a few minutes, so don't be too comfortable sitting down there. Now we're going to give our speech evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their evaluation. Mr. Sergeant of Arms, please escort the contestants out of the room. And once those contestants are seated, they'll be given five minutes to complete their evaluation. Now we can talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, we want to call up our target speaker, Samantha Wiseman. Yeah. Samantha. I think we have a group of, I don't have a ton of challenges. Everybody shows up, 
We have people fighting over like agenda spots, like, oh, I want to be the first one to see the first one. So I think that the most British educators, because we're all new, so it's not an open club where there's some veterans, we're all new, we're all learning along the way. Okay, okay. Have you already picked your successor? <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> now, for you personally, your journey to Toastmasters, where do you see yourself a year from now in Toastmasters? I hope to be the first one to be so competitive <laughs> to my CCNCL. Um, but other than that, the same. I'm mean, just supporting my team and I, I don't have any other. Should I have any other as well? <laughs>
finding that correct position. Hearing it from the standpoint of a recruiter made me personally look at my resume and my mind differently. The loopholes she mentioned is the information relevant to the post. Sometimes we believe we have enough years to help justify why we should get this position. I like how she brought it to our attention that years don't always mean that you're right for the position. Also, she mentioned how recruiters sometimes don't put a lot of effort into looking at a resume. I can truly attest to that. I've seen people walking around at the last minute trying to figure out if this candidate is right by looking at a resume that they just received via email from another partner. To know that someone should put thought into it and spend time with it is very good for the candidate as well as the recruiter. I got a lot of information out of the speech, although it was only five to seven minutes. Two things that I would like to recommend to Samantha is maybe a PowerPoint, although it wasn't necessary, but a PowerPoint that would show a post and a sample of a good resume and a a not so good resume. That way the audience will have an idea of what they may have been doing differently. The other thing is to walk away from the lectern. I felt like you were stuck behind a lectern to use the floor more and I believe that will also attract the audience. Overall I think you did a very good job. The information was very relevant. It's something that everyone here can walk away with. They can share it with someone that they know is looking for a job and next time that they are looking for a job or looking to move up in their company, they'll think twice about the information that they have on their resume. Thank you very much for that speech. And now we have a minute of silence. I like the time to let me know when the minute's up as the judges mark their ballots. A minute of silence, please. Evaluation contestant number two, Matthew Fox. Matthew Fox, evaluation contestant number two. The more I learn, the less I know. Samantha, today you brought me on a wonderful journey of a hiring manager faced with multiple dilemmas. Contest master, fellow Toastmaster, and those of us who are dying to know about the faux pas someone could make during the interview process. I loved your confidence when you came out. You came right to the podium and immediately established yourself as an authority. As a project manager, I just happened to know about some of these hiring practices as I've hired for project managers. I knew you were point on on every example you provided, which further increased my ability to open up to your message. I loved how you used humor, and you drew us in. I don't know about you, but would you lie in a resume? Apparently, Samantha, no. <laughs> and that's where I'd love to get into the points of where I see you going with this speech. What are those tactics that we could add in to punch up your speech a little bit? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the interview that went horrible. Imagine breaking out from behind the podium. This was blocking 80% of your energy. 
Energy transference is huge when we're talking to the audience. If you came over and established yourself here and told us about your first point, about checking those facts on a resume. Hmm, I see here you've had five experience at McDonald's and it appears that you've got a $20 million project you've managed. <laughs> Something doesn't match up here. Nothing against McDonald's, but I think we need to go into the second point here to ask a few questions to understand a little bit more about when we're interviewing certain questions that we want to ask. What's an example of an interview question gone wrong? And how could we take that example and improve upon it? And the last point, what are the different ways that we can improve our interview style? Overall, I loved that amazing energy you had and the information you gave us. Now, again, as you're going on to continue these speeches, think about the different ways we can interact with the audience. I know nerves and staying behind the podium are a challenge, but if we were to come out and make a friend on the left-hand side, make a friend we can talk to in the center, and then make a friend we can talk to on the right, we can immediately establish connections with all the different areas of our audience, and it makes it much more enjoyable. The more I learn, the less I know. I learned a great deal about hiring practices today. As a fellow project manager, my heart goes out to those of us who have to manage, and I can't wait to see where you're going to go. Moment of silence, please. One minute of silence for the judges to mark their ballots. And the silence, please. Evaluation contestant number three, Spencer File. Spencer File, evaluation contestant number three. Please, would you just give me a job already? I've been sitting in the lobby for 20 minutes. Why don't you just give me a job already? <laughs> Toastmasters. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, and especially Samantha. Samantha, you did a fantastic job tonight. Thank you so much for coming and presenting for us so we could have a competition. What I'd like to do is I'd like to dive into what you did great and then what you did that might have got in, gotten in the way of your uh, message a little bit, but then I'd like to offer some suggestions on things that you can do next time to increase the effectiveness of your speech. So to start off, you did a great job of letting all of us know your personality. Very bubbly, very down to earth, and that you really let that shine as you were speaking. That was phenomenal. Your content was awesome. You had very descriptive examples, for instance, like the project management uh, example, when you were talking to the project manager and what you would say to that project manager instead of, oh, so you did that. Well, how, in what way, did that play out like this? So you, you delved a little deeper and gave us specific examples for us as takeaways. That's important as a speaker to give people something that they can use from your speech. And now what I'd like to do is I would like to dive into some things that you can do to remove the semi-barrier of 
the podium and start connecting a little more with your audience. And it is difficult to go beyond your podium and to be comfortable with that, but I'd like to show you a few ways that I do it, and then over a period of time, you'll just get more used to it, and then you won't even use the podium anymore. So first thing is, I'd like to come out and do points at certain parts of the room. Also, that helps the audience keep in mind what point you spoke at what. So for instance, the project manager goes in here, into the office, and then you, you do your first point, like read the resume. Second point of the KSAs, the knowledge, skills, and abilities. And then third point, you wrap up with the uh, scenario questions. <clears throat> and the last thing that I'd like to mention or offer as a suggestion is your speed and the introduction and the conclusion. When you, when you started, you started with so. And it didn't, it didn't affect it too much, but next time, just take a, take a breath. Begin right away with whatever you're going to say. And once you, you had a very concise introduction, and then once you, once you mention whatever you're going to mention, take a breath, and then go into your first point. Lastly, with your conclusion, you mentioned, or when you said the last word, you went up and said it down. And it's just the, the little difference of, is it a question? Or am I stating something? So all in all, phenomenal job. Thank you so much for coming. And just keep in mind to connect with the audience next time. Come up here, and I look forward to seeing your next speech. One minute of silence, please, for the judges. A minute of silence. Contestant number four, Charlene Reinhardt. Charlene Reinhardt, contestant number four. If you are seeking the highest return on your investment, and an individual who can deliver the worst news and make you feel like the best person ever, <laughs> search no more. Samantha Wiseman has just arrived. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, Madam Toastmaster, and Samantha Wiseman, where are you? Yes. <laughs> Samantha, you are the best person for any job because within your speech, you deliver three essentials of a great HR professional. One, efficiency. When Samantha Wiseman walked on stage, she didn't give you a long introduction about what she was going to say. She immediately wrapped you in and said, I'm here and this is what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you three steps about the HR process so that you can make the best decisions when you're hiring someone. She did not waste our time. She's time conscious and efficient. That's a thousand dollars added to the session. <laughs> <laughs> Two, besides being efficient, you're personable. You were talking about the HR process, but you had a smile on your face the entire time. If I was sitting down in the interview with you, I would think that I was the best candidate ever, even though you were saying, oh, you're just horrible. I was just <laughs> but you kept the smile on your face, and I would have been smiling with you. And third, Samantha, you're knowledgeable. You gave us information left, right, side to side without looking at your notes. 
You had great eye contact. You engaged the right, the left, the middle, all within a few seconds. And you hit on three major points rapidly. Great job with that. Because you're so talented and you're the HR guru, I want you to give you some tips so that you can magnify your gift even more and persuade your audience to take your approach. Number one, your introduction. You came in immediately and gave us exactly what you were going to reveal to us. How about the introduction that ignites some suspense, that allows the audience to think about, okay, what is she about to say? Where is she going next? You can do a question to engage your audience and to make sure they are about to listen to everything that you're saying. When you first come on stage, you want your audience to start taking out notepads and glue to every word that you are saying. Two, examples. You gave three different tips for the hiring process, but how about examples? What stories that bring everything you said to life? So you talked about this foolish resume writer who was just a liar. I want to hear about this resume writer. I want to be laughing on the floor. Connect with me by breaking down that barrier. You can say the, the resume writer was so exaggerated that he said he climbed five stairs, did five jobs, all of this within a short amount of time. But Samantha, you have a gift. And next time you come up here, give it all to the audience and test them to make sure they remember everything you said. Madam Toastmaster. Our final contestant, Julianne Kissack. Julianne Kissack, our last contestant. Toastmasters, welcome guests and our honorable presenter, Samantha. First of all, fantastic presentation, Samantha. I'm here tonight to talk about three things I thought Samantha did a fantastic job on and three additional things that I think could really raise her speech to the next level, even though that might be a challenge. First thing Samantha did, Samantha obviously is an expert in her field. And I felt that right from the beginning of Samantha's speech. She radiated kind of a grace, I felt, not only when she came down to the podium, but when she first spoke. And it was that quality of her voice, the conviction and the confidence that made me say right off the bat, this girl is an absolute expert in her field, and you had me right away, which was fantastic. Second point, Samantha illustrated perfectly the use of structure. This is so key when we address our audience and we want to provide them with value. So what Samantha did, she illustrated exactly when she was going to provide us value, which made it so easy for us to take that away. So she said, my first tip for you is going to be, and then she delivered it to us on a platter, which was fantastic. The third thing Samantha did absolutely great was her use of examples. So not only is she an expert in her field, but she was able to bring that um, expert base in to <coughs> give us real examples of her knowledge and practice. So for example, Samantha not only gave us an example, but she said, this is how you can use it. So here is a question, tell me about a time um, when you led a project. So 
So she gave us, this is what I'm going to tell you, here's the value, and here's how you actually use it. Very well done. Now to take her speech to the next level, three things. First of all, right from the beginning, Samantha, she came down here standing in this space, right? So yes, we know there's a podium, absolutely we can use it, but you address the audience so beautifully, you know, use that space, connect with them, um, illustrate your points by moving around in the space. Um, secondly, so in your intro, you introduce yourself to the audience, hook us in right from the beginning. So have you ever been in that situation? You have two candidates, both equally as good, how are you going to choose, right? Draw us and use that example and then tell us your structure. Well, today I'm going to give you three examples on how you can choose the right candidate. Let me just say too, you concluded your structure with a fantastic action benefit. So that's something to keep in there for sure. Now my third point is just carry that use of example throughout your speech. So start off with a hook, bring us in with that experience, and then continue that. You definitely did do that, but give us some more real life examples. So I was sitting across from this candidate, and the only thing I could think of was to ask them this question, and it worked. Use these tips and you'll find the right candidate. Great job, Samantha, and thank you. The judges complete their ballot. And we ask that nobody leaves the room until the ballots are collected. And judges, please make sure you sign and date your ballot. Madam Contest Master, the ballot has to be counted. Thank you. Okay, for the sake of time, we're really going to be conscious of that. We're going to make a slight change in the program. We're going to interview the contestants after. Right now, we're going to ask for district announcements, two minutes of announcements. Who's ever giving district announcements? And after our district announcements, we're going to have a five-minute break. Five-minute break, and then we're going to go right into our humorous speech contest. So let's welcome our Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training of the District, Donna Rossman. Yeah. <laughs> the winners tonight are going to go to our district contest, which are at our fall conference, November 9th, Willowbrook Inn, Willowbrook, Illinois. Our keynote speaker is Dwayne Smith. He is the 2002 World Class Champion Speaker. Let's see, there's an early bird rate that's good until October 25th, $99 for all of your club members to go, as well as guests. Individuals, it's $40. 
Let's see, the events start with the Achievers Breakfast. If you've earned an award since April 20th, you go for a free hot breakfast. 7 a.m., but it's worth it, it's free. <laughs> Eight o'clock, the Banner Parade. So you put on a skit for 15 minutes with your club and the winner gets free registration for the spring conference. Lots of fun. 9 a.m. is the evaluation contest. 10.30 is the business meeting. If you're not going to the business meeting, we have two educational sessions. The first one is Improve with Improv with Ellen Schneer. The second one is our world champion, Prez, talking <laughs> So any club that has earned distinguished, select distinguished, president distinguished, last year or this year, your whole club gets to walk the red carpet, have your picture taken professionally by our photographer there, you get a, a trophy and you get to brag, right? And then we're also doing club ambassador, triple crown. Four o'clock is the humorous contest. Six o'clock is dinner, but we're also doing the DTM ceremony and maybe a couple of other awards. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is when Dwayne Smith, the 2002 keynote speaker, is speaking. And I've recently added, at after dinner, karaoke! <laughs> so here's a flyer on the back of the songs you can start practicing for your prizes! Thank you! Five minutes break. Five minutes go.